Hey, welcome back guys to another War 3 for Blasphemous 2. This will be my 100% War 3 guide for the Mia Corpa DLC. And I've got a full text guide for this as well linked in the description. You can use that by itself or alongside the video. It's completely up to you, but it's quite in depth. So you can use that without having to refer to the video at all. Or if you even want to look ahead to where or you think you missed something, you can just Google it. Well, not Google, but you can search in there. And it will take you straight to where we actually collect it in the walkthrough. And of course you can work out timestamps for everything from the text guide itself. So to begin with, as you saw, I just loaded up a 100% base game safe. Yes, I'm doing the DLC from a base game 100% safe. And we are in new game. So my figures, I'm going to equip in pair one will be Castilla and Trifon. Castilla and Trifon have a new resonance, by the way. They now give you a free revive. It's not free, I mean, you do get full guilt if it happens, but it's nice just to have one revive just in case. So we're going to equip them two in one pair. Pair two will be the Anointed One and Gregor. Pair three will be Kobiar the Mare and the Scribe. And pair four will be Yassi, Miento and the Selfless Father. Of course, you can equip something else if you want to. That's just what I'm going to be going with and I'm pretty much not going to be changing that at all. A lot of my guides, I always like to keep the same build. Try to get a build which works for everything and it's really strong. And this kind of works for me. Now when it comes to my rosary beads, I'm just going to equip the ones for the best defense. So I'm going to equip scratch face from a canvas, salt covered spear point, votive offering claimed by rust, votive offering of a hopeful mother, and the pewter tears. Now you might want to change up some elemental beads, depending on what enemy or boss you're facing, but I don't really change them, I just leave them out they are now, as you've just seen. And in terms of New Game Plus guys, I'll probably make a New Game Plus video later on they're going to be changing new game plus they said officially in an update so once the update gets released yes new game plus should be changed slightly and should be even better than what it is on the initial release of the dlc so what i've done first guys is we've warped to the north save point in the quiet of thorns we've gone to teleport gate and then we've warped to the east teleport gate in the quiet of thorns then we've gone into the doorway on the right this is a new area we're going into now it's not a new area, but it's like an extension of the Quiet of Thorns. Now, I've got this gauntlet to begin with. What we're going for first is new abilities. One new ability in this DLC. And it's literally like a minute away. It's that close to getting it. Now, you see, this only takes me two hours. It doesn't really take that long either. There is a glitch. Quite a bad glitch actually in terms of these lumps of gold you have to get, but I'll touch upon that a bit more in a second. So in this room, break the floor in with your sword, and here's a new ability, guys. Broken step. Once you've got a broken step, we're gonna head right and get to a save point, then we're gonna warp to the sunken cathedral. And a few more optional areas before we kind of get on with the main story of the DLC. Yeah, when it comes to lumps of gold. There's 20 altogether, and you have to collect all 20 to get two different items, and these count towards a consummate collector. At the moment, when I made this video, that is a bit bugged. And a lot of guys will tell you to return them one by one. You can do that, it's probably a more safe way to do it, but it's a very, very tedious way to do it. Yes, yeah, so a warp to the southeast safe point in the sunken cathedral, guys. Now, here we're going to go left, one screen, and we're going to go up and then we're going to go right into a new unexplored area if you open your map you'll see like a little doorway leading to nowhere because you've not been in there yet it's a new dlc optional part yes yeah, so go right here you actually have to go this way in the story now because some of these, some of these new areas are actually in the update which are free and some of them are actually in the paid dlc i'm covering everything pretty much but this part here you can actually access this part without buying the actual dlc this is in the free updates so this first lump of gold, now what I do with my lumps of gold, I'm going to turn in 10 and then 10. So I'm going to get 10, turn them in, and then get 10 more and turn them in. Now what you want to do when you pick them up, always check your inventory, make sure the gold is counted. And if it looks like it's not counted, then reset your recent save before you save. You might want to duplicate your save every now and then because you can duplicate your saves now, which is really helpful. So yeah, first lump of gold there. Like I say, when you've got one, Always set your quest items, that's it, make sure it's worked on the counter. So at the moment it says 1, when you get another one that should say 2. 
Yeah, because there's a bug where it can reset to one and that can mess it all up. You might have six, for example, and all of a sudden it'll go back down to one. You've basically lost five of them if that happens in that case, that specific number. I'm not sure exactly what it's related to. It might be related to not checking them in your inventory box. It might be related to die, not die, um, sorry, to dying. I'm not entirely sure. I've died a few times and it's, it's not, the git glitch hasn't triggered. Um, but sometimes it does. I'm not entirely sure what triggers it. But just bear that in mind. When you pick up a lump of gold, always check your inventory. Make sure it's counted. And if you ever notice it's not counting, quit to main menu and reload your save. Do not save your game if it doesn't count. Very, very important. Guys. Right, and with all that important stuff out of the way, I'll walk you through this a bit more now. So break this wall here. Yeah, we just walked back to City of the Blessed Name, by the way. And then we walked to the south and west save points in the aqueduct of the cost alleys yeah so here hit the bell uh, with the mace and the make way downwards take the bottom left exit this is new area by the way but you can actually i think you can access this one even if you don't have the pay dlc this one is in the free update so yeah smash that to remove one of them gates and then walk back to the city once back at city, we are then going to walk to the repose of the silent one. Yeah, back in the starting area. As you can see, just above the save point, there's a new path opened up. So once you spawn in, just make your way upwards. Up the cherubs. At the moment, the cherubs are the only thing which carry into New Game Plus. And any actual New Game Plus rewards. But you have to complete the game on New Game Plus in order to get the rewards for the first time. So I guess New Game Plus Plus you get the rewards. So yeah, New Game Plus you only carry over the cherubs. So here, smash that. And as you see, it's going to remove that final gate. So you can access that chest. And this is going to be one of the new items. This one of the new press. Garcella of Tender Relief. You can't get all the trophies, DLC trophies, guys, with just a free update. You have to buy the paid DLC in order to get all the DLC trophies. You can get one or two of them. Just with the base game but yeah to get them all you need the pay dlc so now we're going to walk to the streets of wakes after getting back to the main city now we're going to crack on with the main new dlc story area so take the bottom right exit come to this vents interact with it guys and then interact with the mud man to get a mud key and then you can open that mud door on the right i'm not entirely sure when you can access this as you're going through the main game story the base game and um, but of course as you can see with a full completed save you can access it so then mud keys, there's five to get. And once you have all five, you'll then get a ceramic key on the next mud men. But they're not all in the same area. They'll be scattered about all these new parts of the DLC. So you've got to explore quite a bit. But this route I'm showing you guys is quite optimal. So in this room, you want to make sure you kill all the enemies. Because it's like a little optional side quest. This doesn't impact the trophies in, in any way. But it gives you a one golden flask. Which it's a shame it doesn't give you six golden flasks. But I wonder if you can actually, if you keep doing it again plus, if you can get another golden flask and another one. Well, I guess you can't because I don't think that carries over in, into New Game Plus. But maybe that's something that might change in the New Game Plus update. But yeah, in this room, defeat all the enemies. Yes, and then come over here. You should see a gravestone with a little blue flame. You see that gravestone just there? A little blue flame. Just come stand still near the gravestone and do not do anything. And after about 30 seconds, you'll kind of bow and the spirit will come out and give you an item I did destroy it when it first came in but it's actually a stone figure in the background bowing near this grave to kind of give you like a hint but when I kill the enemy I actually destroy that figure but yeah all these graves you can actually do this too you'll see a blue flame near them when you've killed all the enemies in the room and also there'll be a figure beside it if you haven't already smashed it but yeah grab the item from that gravestone guys once you got it, go right, get the save point, and we're just going to unexplore everything in this room, every map tile. Yeah, grab this lump of gold. So when you grab this, check your quest items and make sure it's counted. Remember, and there you go. See, I've got two. So always do this. Whenever you get a lump of gold, always check. You can probably just check every now and then if you want, maybe just before you're about to save your game. So make sure you've unexplored every map tile in this room, and then go back to the left. 
especially if you die if you die also check your lumps of gold you probably want to maybe I mean if you want to play a save every time you save your game guys quit the main menu and duplicate your save if you want to play it safe I mean that's the safest option I'd say that way and picking it one at a time but one at times mega mega tedious that's why I didn't want to do it so I do 10 and 10 so here it's going to make way for the top left exit We're going to get another mud key in a second yeah these new switches like a new little mechanic in the DLC I don't think they're in the base game I mean it's been a while since I've played well gone through the base game oh, I think they're just from added from the DLC but yeah here's his second mud key Yeah, but actually, leave you see a little cutscene. This always happens when you get a mud key. When you try and leave the room, you see this cutscene with this boss later. My master, tell me. So we're going to make our way back through here, and you might notice a lump of gold in a previous room, which we couldn't access because we couldn't switch the green, uh, green blocks properly. You, you normally have to switch it from one side, then go all the way around. But for some reason, when you get a mud key, it resets in this room. So you can actually come straight back in and get a lump of gold. So get a lump of gold, guys, and unlock that shortcut lever. Now, if you check your quest items, it should say three. Yep, three. If it don't say three, quit to main menu and reload your save. Do not save your game. That's really important, guys. If that gets reset, that glitch happens for you. It's going to mess up your 100% save. What I normally like to do as well, I always... Before I even start the DLC, I duplicated my save. So if I ever do need to restart, I can just restart it by duplicating um, a save later. I'll try, I'll try to never use the same one, I'll just always duplicate that one, so I've always got the original spare if I need it. Um, but yeah, we'll get our shortcut gate, you make your way down here guys to get a save point. I'm going to go left just to unlock this teleport gate. Make sure you go into the room. Teleport gates are always a bit weird to count. Sometimes if you go in and out quickly, they don't count. Teleport gate, always go in the room, open map, make sure it's triggered and then you can exit. Now here, there's a highly missable trophy related to this dude. I'll be pointing them both out to you. It's only a missable trophy in the DLC, I think. One related to this guy. Well, two missable trophies, I guess, depending on how you go about it. But you're only gonna miss one. Because if you miss one, that means you've got the other, and vice versa. So yeah, got a gauntlet here. Some of the enemies in this DLC are very, very annoying. There's so many enemies which do like a massive AoE effect. Like, see this guy? When you kill this guy, yeah, he's going to explode. Yeah, so many enemies in this DLC explode like that, guys, and it gets very messy at times. But they've also said in an update that they're going to balance the... DLC a bit more so that should be changed so these areas if you go through this before the update gets released and you think it's a bit messy or you're watching me and realizing it's changed now yeah hopefully they do balance it out a bit more we'll see what I mean later it's just get you have like six or seven enemies chasing you which all explode and you just kind of got you can't move and you got tricky platforming you keep getting knocked down and whatnot and um, so in this room after the gauntlet use the statue and lower that green switch if you attack these with a sword, it kind of makes you drop slightly. So sometimes it's better to attack these with a dagger. Because you don't lose any height then. Yeah, but once you get up here, pull that lever. Talking about that shortcut lever, that shortcut gate below. And then continue to the right two screens to reach end of the save point. So once you save your game, it's going to make your way back to the left. Yeah, you're going to go left quite a few screens here the switch is high up in the air there's no real benefit guys to killing enemies by the way on the DLC you don't get any more experience if you max I mean if you're not maxed then yeah kill him but if you are maxed in terms of your martyrdom points yeah you're not going to get any real benefit for killing enemies other than I guess a bit of enjoyment if you want to kill him so I guess kill him if you want to but yeah in terms of leveling and whatnot making character stronger killing the enemies has no effect so I just completely explored this whole room and I smashed that shortcut gate at the bottom to unlock it. Then I used my sword on the floor and I made my way down in this bottom left exit. Now carefully make your way across. 
Now this is the second guillotine switch. As you see now, it'll raise the guillotine a bit more. Now it's one more to go. Yeah, trophy related to this guy. Once the guillotine's reset back at the top, you have to go back to him. You can either pull the guillotine lever to kill him, or you can attack the guillotine at the top of the blade, and it breaks it and saves his life. So this is another lump of gold, guys. He has got a shortcut gate. That's another lump of gold. I did have a look very quickly, uh, but that was, should be number four. So right now, if you look in your quest items, you should have four lumps of gold. And now we're going to walk back to the city, and we're going to walk to the east safe point in the ice band, ice bound mausoleum. Once you spawn in, you're going to take left exit. You're going to make way left. Sorry, not left. You're going to make way up this room. Let's carry on up. Smash that shortcut gate to unlock it. Go left and then go through the background door, guys, to get back outside. Right, in this room. First up, we want to jump on the house, guys. Sorry, not the house, but that roof where we came out of because there's a, a lump of gold hidden there. I always forget to do it. But make sure you slide down slide a little bit, guys, to unlock that bottom left map tile. Yeah, this lump of gold here. I always forget. I always mean to go for this one first, but I always forget and go left to begin with so yeah grab that lump of gold guys from that secret wall that should be gold number five so right now you should have five lumps of gold if you don't quit to main menu and reload your save yeah you can just make this jump I would say just we don't have much to spare you have to be quite optimal there if you're jumping and you're platforming but once you get up here make sure you unlock that shortcut ladder then come right into the screen now this screen is another it's another room with a gravestone in which you can interact with and get another item. So you want to kill all the enemies in this room. Yeah, you see them enemies which keep exploding. There's this, like an enemy spawner and it can spawn four of them at once. So you can have four of them chasing you. You can also and you can also have some other explosive enemies. And yeah, and there's a few parts where you fight them all at once. And trying to and you're trying to platform up a room. The thing about them is they follow you all the way across the room as well. Where some of the other enemies they don't, they just they kind of they stay in their kind of general spawn area. But yeah, them they just chase you across the whole room, even if they're out of screen. So if you don't see a blue flame, just move it away a little bit. So the grave is off screen, and then come back, and once you see a blue flame. Just stand still near the gravestone guys and to get the item. Like I say, make sure all the enemies are dead in this room. From the doorway where we just came out of, this was actually, it wasn't the room where you initially came back outside, it's a room to the right. Yeah, if you because I've not quite shown I'm not showing you my map quite often, am I? But yeah, when you came out that background, that background door, it was the next room on the right, and that's where we are now. So once you've got that item. There's four of them to do in total, by the way. So we're going to go in this background, background door now. Yes, yeah, so we're going to come down the slope. We're going to make our way all the way to the bottom of this room through the chains. Yes, yeah, it's going to be another mud door down here. When you go through a mud door, you'll pretty much always find a key somewhere pass that mud door so you can't really lock yourself out unless you just just get hit by a nasty glitch yeah you can't run out of mud keys and get yourself trapped so just make your way along this room and there'll be a little gauntlet here yeah be two of these there's a lot of teleporting enemies as well you got these which teleport and there's that other enemy which spawns the red eye above you that teleports as well yeah, watch your health. The enemies do a lot of damage. A lot of damage. There's this enemy later. It can almost instant kill you just from one attack. It like do four explosions all together. And I think that might get rebalanced because that really feels unfair when it kills you. Yeah, so once you kill them two, come here next. And this enemy is really, really strong as well, guys. So you might have just saw there quickly. I think I've got four lumps, five lumps of gold still. So yeah, just check your lumps of gold often, guys. Like I said, I don't know exactly what causes glitch. It might be to dine in some way. 
it might be not checking your inventory for a certain time after collecting keys. I'm not quite sure exactly. But just keep doing what I'm doing. Keep checking your inventory after getting each gold. And check often to make sure they've not bugged out. Yeah, this enemy does so much damage. Just like 100 damage if it hits you. I don't know why. I think they do too much damage. Well, they might get nerfed, hopefully, so they don't do so much damage. Right, so this is your next mud key. Yeah, this should be mud key number three, I think. Yes, yeah, so once it's got that mud key, take a left exit. And you'll get a brief scene with this dude again. What he's doing is actually giving you hints to where all the mud keys are located. Oh no, it doesn't really help. It doesn't really help at all. But yeah, I think that's what he's supposed to be doing, giving you a little hint. So we're not going to get our chest yet. I didn't mean to do that. We're going to leave our chest for later. So for now, I'm just going to take this left exit opposite the one we just came came through. And can come left. We're going to unlock this gate, these two shortcut gates. We're going to make our way downwards. Now save your save your um, MP, your further, your MP bar, guys, because you can get caught out here real bad. You might want to kill all the enemies before you drop down here. I'm actually going to freeze time. I'm going to pull this lever, but you, you kind of see what happens. Way you pull this lever, it's kind of in like a little dead end corner, and all the enemies will kind of follow you down and trap you, and you won't be able to get out, because every time you try and climb up, they just keep knocking you down, and they do a lot of damage. So yeah, try and do what I do, or kill them all beforehand. Do not go down that corner where the switch is, guys, without any further, and with all the enemies alive which are chasing you. Trust me, you will die. I've died there a good few times in that little spot. So yeah, continue along here. This is your third and final guillotine lever. Now it's all the way at the top. We can head over to him, guys, and get the two missable trophies. Well, we'll get one. Yeah, we'll get one in here. You want to dash across here because otherwise the two top tiles in this room will be unexplored. Yeah, two blocks in that room will be unexplored unless you do that. So make way back over to the entrance, guys, and then walk back to the um, city. Yeah, one of the trophies, missable ones, it, it will pop straight away. But the other one will not pop until you've killed two bosses. So you always, obviously, want to do the one first, which will pop straight away. And then you reload, and then you do the other one, ready for later. And that's kind of how you want it, how you get both at once. You know, with the quickest time. So just walk back here. Yep, to the east save point in the Choir of Thorns. Gonna make our way right a few times. Yep, up here you're gonna break that um, that wall there with your sword. Yeah, got a tricky platforming bit here. So you gotta make our way all the way to the bottom right, you gotta hit the bell. And you gotta make our way back up the middle, then to the top right here it's a second bell. Because the bottom right bell it doesn't reach far enough to um, trigger the top left platforms. It'll trigger the middle one but not the top left. So yeah, as you jump, just attack the switch. And when you're jumping on the the um, false plates guys, the glass plates, you might want to try to just jump up one at a time. So you've always got one to jump back onto just in case they don't come back in time. Yeah, so you hit that top right one guys and then make way over to the top left. Break that door. And there you go. Another prayer. The temple of the three winds. Yes, when you got that, go back down the bottom left exit, come downwards guys, and here is another mud key door. We're doing all the mud key doors to begin with. Yeah, the way we're going. So first we've got the um we got the new ability. Then we've got a, we've got a few items, and then we go for the mud keys pretty much, and just doing obviously story along the way. Um but now, you know we've just left at the mausoleum, it's because next up will be the boss. And just after the boss, you need a ceramic key to unlock a door. So I want to get a ceramic key and then we're gonna go and kill the boss. Then we can unlock the ceramic door straight after him. And yes, we just got a gold. Yeah, grab that lump of gold at the top right there, guys. And that should have been gold. Yeah, that should have been lump of gold 6 of 20. And obviously break the top left fake wall. And then follow the path around to this next mud key. Mud key number 4. So yeah, you should have 6 lumps of gold right now. Of course, if you don't have, then quit the main menu and reload. So once got the fourth mud key, 
Leave the room via the bottom left, you see another brief cutscene. I'm going to unlock this shortcut gate. Yeah, you're going to drop back down here. I'm going to go left into the exit opposite the mud door, which we went through earlier. I'm going to follow this path left, guys, and it's going to take you to a chest back near the save point. Yeah, here we go. So you've got a chest here. There's going to be a new figure, the family. Yeah, smash that glass to um, unlock the shortcut gate, guys. The new save point, I'm going to warp to the north save point in the sacred entombments. Yeah, the north save point in the sacred entombments. We're now going to go to the second new Mia Corpa DLC area. Yeah, two brand new areas. You can only access them in the paid DLC Mia Corpa. The free DLC just basically extends some of the some of the um, base game areas. And any mud key doors, by the way, the mud key doors are from the paid DLC. So you pretty much will find that you can only access the extended areas up to the mud doors, and then beyond that, it's locked until you buy the DLC. We'll be back here later, so remember this spot guys. You have to go back to each weapon location from the base game in order to find an enemy later on. So yeah, go inside this bird cage. It actually acts as a lift. It will take you over to the top left of the map to Santa Vigilia. Yeah, so break through that floor if you saw it. Hit that V bell. Slide beneath there guys and make way upwards. Yeah, send up the ladder. Now you want to hit that glass just down the bottom there to unlock that shortcut ladder, almost forgot. But yeah, smash that and then carry on up the ladder. Yeah, this ladder, get a save point. You see that red door to the left? Yeah, when we f fight this next boss coming up and, and then open the door past him with a ceramic key. Yeah, there's a mud key there we should just open. Yeah, then that door will get opened for you. So yeah, to begin with, the DLC kind of wants you to keep revisiting areas or messing about across your map. Rather than put all the five mud keys in one one area, they're all scattered about the whole map. And um, of course, first you need that new ability. So once we're here, yeah, use the statue to lower that middle floor, and then you can use that to do the um, ground pound type thing and smash that wall at the bottom, guys, and get the final mud key. Yes, yeah, so will be the final mud key, but next the next one will give us the ceramic key. They will, they will fall. So yes, get that fifth mud key. And then once you've got that, you're gonna warp back to the safe point. But because we're in an area where um a cutscene triggers when you leave, it won't let you use your your um prayer in here to warp back to the safe point. So you have to go outside the room and then use it. My faith, no matter only yeah, I don't think they liked you using it in them rooms because they, they, it probably messed up this cutscene in some way, I guess. Yeah, so back to the city. And then once back at the city, guys, we're going to go to the north safe point in the elevated temples. Yeah, north safe point in the elevated temples. Right, once you spawn in, go left twice and then take the top right exit in the big light tower room. Yeah, top right exit in here. Yeah, now here, you've got a bit of platforming to do. This one's fairly simple, but it can get a bit messy at the top. Because what you'll find at the top, if you dash through the chain and don't manage to use, a, to use the mirror, you'll fall all the way back down to the bottom. You've got to do the whole thing again. So let's try to focus, make sure you do this first time, otherwise it'll just great you have to reset it pretty much. So what I normally try and do, when you jump to go back through a chain, save your double jump for when you get through it, only dash. So get to the top of the uh, grapple, the grapple hole, uh, the grapple point on the wall, jump, dash, and then double jump next to the mirror and then attack it to warp to the top, guys. And then grab that next lump of gold. That should be lump of gold number seven. So if you check your inventory now, you should have seven 
lumps of gold quest items. And then you walk back to save point back in the city. They're going to warp to the southwest save point guys in the sunken cathedral. Once you spawn in here, take the right exit twice. And then take the bottom exit into the labyrinth of the tides. Or labyrinth of tides. Yes, yeah, so in here, you're going to take the um, left exit. Most of what I'm reading to you guys is from a text guide. Yes, I'm here. The text guide it even tells you what rooms to go in. It will say like, take the left exit, take the right exit, take the upper right exit, um, hit the switch, grab the item, take the bottom right exit times two. Yeah, it tells you everything, even what when to move rooms and whatnot. So here, yeah, just ignore that floor for the moment for the time being. We're going to take the right exit to begin with. Now use that statue to slide this over to you. Now you want to hit it first before it starts moving. Just hit it first and then wait on the platform. Yes, hit it and then wait. Now when it moves across, just hit it once. But when you want to use the mirror, wait until it's in the mirror. Like so, otherwise you're going to hit it twice by mistake. So yeah, wait until it's in the mirror and then kind of jump so you, you time it so when you hit the mirror you actually hit that at the same time otherwise you'll probably fall down because you'll hit it twice or something uh, but yeah once through trigger that save point go into the teleport room make sure you unlock um, view the map make sure it's triggered and then take the bottom right exit now make your way through here yeah this one's a little bit awkward at times as well oh, looks like I didn't have too much trouble this time but yeah, in here, just make your way right, get that shortcut gate, and then make sure you've unlocked every tile in this room. Yeah, so make sure you've got the tile to the right and the shortcut gate, and then make your way over to the top left, unlock this shortcut, yes, and then drop down and go left. Right, back in with the save point room, now you want to go into the top right exit. Yeah, dash across the gap. Now it's going to be a gauntlet here. This gauntlet can be a bit tricky. You'll see what I mean in, um, in a minute by how messy some of the enemies get, which do like the big attacks. You've got a floating lantern guy in a second, and it's very annoying trying to fight them when you've got other enemies attacking you. Yeah, this guy. Because they've got a massive range. Yeah, you see how annoying that is? And it does massive knockdown as well. So you find some attacks when you're jumping in the air, they damage you, but they don't knock you back when you jump in. Um, but this guy's attacks will, they will knock you back, even if you're in the air. All the explosion type attacks, yeah, will knock you back. Right, so once you're all dead, the gate should unlock, you should hear it. So make way up to the top and grab that item from the chest. Yeah, it should be the Praviana of the Golden Dawn. So once you've got that, go back down the bottom left exit. Yeah, then you want to take the upper left exit in here. Now here, just hit the switch once so you can climb up this wall on the right. And then use the mirrors to get across. And there's going to be an item at the far top left. Yes, this should be, yeah, the beautified, that should be figure, another one. Right, so back in this room now, we're going to break the floor now, finally. Pretty sure I hold, held down when that I press that. Sometimes it don't seem to work. Yeah, so once at the bottom, smash wall on the left, find a secret wall, and tap the switch, guys, to make the fake wall disappear. Obviously, try not to die. You can actually go in the accessibility settings now as well, by the way, in the options, and make it so traps don't actually damage you. No more, which is really helpful. So here's another lump of gold. Yeah, this should be lump of gold. I think that's lump of gold. Is it number eight, maybe? Yes, and then you want to open this mud door, guys, with your mud key. Yes, that was lump of gold number eight. You should have eight lumps of gold at the moment. If not, then you've either missed one or the glitch has happened for you. If the glitch happens, you'll probably be on one. So you know, if you're, if I'm on eight and you're on seven, for example, it's probably because you've missed one. But if you're on one and I'm on eight, it's because the glitch has happened for you. Yeah, so in this room, just carrying downwards, them thorny, them like thorny walls, you need the new weapon to get through them. But it's not going to come until a bit later in the story. You've got to kill two 
DLC bosses first before we can access that. Yes, yeah, so this we make our way up, dash through there. And um, you want to slide down this wall first. The statue to open that door, guarding the lump of gold, is all the way over here. So first up, we're going to come over here, we're going to smash that top right wall. You'll find a statue. Use the statue to raise that time door. And then you want to quickly make your way over to it. If you mess up at any time here, you likely won't make it on time. So if you think you have wasted too much time, just reset guys and go back and pull a statue. Yes, there you go, another lump of gold. That should be lump of gold number nine. Yep, so we're going to get one more and then we're going to hand them in. I'll show you where you hand them in as well. Yeah, so um, the fix, the kind of guaranteed workaround is to hand in one at a time. That's what a lot of players have been doing. Yeah, so um, save your game there, guys. Then we're going to break that floor if you saw it. You can see over there, there's some of those mud guys again. They're actually going to give you the ceramic. Now you've got, now that you've got all five mud keys, they're going to give you the ceramic key. So this gone, it's got 19 enemies. I think it's 19. I always struggle to count to 20. I can count to 22 and 23, fine. I just can't count to 20. I just always get mixed up. Yeah, so like I say, be very, very careful. But we are almost done in this area, and we could be going back to the mausoleum and taking on the first boss. There's a save point coming up, but it's still a good few rooms away. So try not to lose too much health if you can help it. Yeah, some enemies are weaker to different types of weapons. Yeah, some enemies are weaker to dagger, some are weaker to the sword, and obviously some are weaker to the mace. I mostly just try to use the mace where I can. Yeah, pull out lever. I just find the mace a bit more accessible, I guess, a bit more simple. Because um, I can get away with just spamming attacks a bit more, a bit more with the mace. And it builds up further really quick as well. So you can use your time spell quicker and just freeze enemies in place, which equal more damage. So yeah, once you've got a ceramic key, this will be your final cutscene which you should get with this dude. Yeah, smash that to unlock the shortcut gate. Come right. Now, just make sure you've unlocked the top tile in this room. Yes, yeah, make sure the top tile is unlocked. And then smash the bottom left wall to find a secret with a prayer inside. Yeah, grab that prayer. Hit the bell and then climb up. Now, use this lever and move the green switch to approximately here. Don't move any more left because you want to be able to hit it when you're jumping to the right. That's why you want to put it to the right of the lift. But you also want it in place where you can hit both. We can hit the shell at the same time. Normally, the shell is too far away, you can't do both. Yeah, so go through that door once it's unlocked. Take the bottom right exit, save point, unlock the gates, and go through this cave in the background. Yeah, grab lump gold number 10. Yeah, so once you've got number 10 lump of gold, come and talk to this tree. Now, assuming you've given him 10, you'll get a you know, get a new item for it. Yeah, a bead, the traitor's gaze. So make sure you're giving him 10, guys. That's it. And once you've done so, we're going to walk back to the save point. So at the moment, I've got no gold at all because I've just used them all. So once back at the save point, yes, now we're going to warp to the southern save point in the housebound mausoleum icebound so up here take a right exit yeah you want to make sure you save your game it's going to be reloading the safe in a second quite important yes yeah, so now we're going to head right and to the guillotine guy so make sure you save your game yeah when you spawn in always rest again so you don't normally you don't normally save your game when you first come back so yeah first interrupt the lever guys 
and um, I've already popped these trophies, but I'm going to show you what one will pop now. So pull a lever, and this is a trophy you'll get for pulling a lever. This is one which pops almost instantly. So you'll get that one. Yet yeah, mind your head, make the prisoner's grim wish a reality. So you see it pop in a second, there it is. That's a trophy you'll get once you pull a lever yourself. Now once you've got that trophy, just quit to main menu, and then reload your game, and that will not save. That's it, just quit to main menu. The game only saves if you die, or if you rest at a save point, or after completing the game. That will save it as well. So yeah, once you spawn back in after quitting to main menu, head back, and now, you're going to destroy the blade. So attack the blade. After the dialogue, jump up and smash it. And I'll automatically rescue him. There you go. Then later on, we'll get another trophy for him, but it's later. So you do the instant one first, and then the one which takes a bit longer, we'll do that last. And leave that one in play. So now let's carry on. We're going to make our way down to the first proper boss now of the DLC. It's one of the massive bosses which kind of in the background and lobs all projectiles at you. So unlock that shortcut gate and then come back in to the left. Head across this room. Yep, unlock that shortcut gate. Go back through. Now going to make our way down the bottom. I'm going to take the lower right exit. There's going to be a gauntlet here. This gauntlet's a little bit annoying as well, just because of the placement of the blocks for you to stand on. Yeah, the placement of the platforms are like in a really awkward place. And the switches, because you'll be attacking enemies, but you'll be also hitting the switches at the same time. And um, you'll drop down, but you'll, you'll find the floor is moved, and you'll just drop to your death. Yes, yeah, quite an awkward gauntlet this one due to that. And you got a big lantern enemy coming up. Remember, watch these guys. They do a big AOE slash and they also explode. And I think I've got them all. Yes, nice. Weren't too bad. So in this room, make way all the way down to the bottom. Yeah, then take the bottom left exit. Dash through the chain. Just ignore these guys. Now you can just skip this puzzle a little bit, a little trick, um, which I, I think I learned by mistake actually. Yeah, so you want to position it about there, just so you can get that green switch for your mace, and also so you can actually still attack it with your daggers through the wall. Yeah, if you attack it here, it'll actually make you teleport into the wall, and then you're already in the middle guys, and you can drop down. Yes, yeah, so where normally... It teleports all the way to the right and you have to let switches again, send it back up and down in order to get a lever. Right, so we've got a boss fight coming up, so save your game. And I've equipped the prayer which allows you to freeze time. That's pretty much my go-to. I don't really use my versus much that often. I always save my MP for my freezing time prayer. Yeah, so this boss, you, cannot, you can't actually properly damage him until you smash the crystal in the middle and then um, his kind of hands drop down and his heart drops out you can damage him properly for a moment for about three seconds probably not even that but when he does that purple explosion in the middle when his hands close together that purple explosion guys will deplete all your mp yeah basically it will suck up all your mp so make sure you avoid that big purple explosion in the middle at all costs otherwise it's going to waste all your mp and you want to try to save your MP for when you knock his hands down like so. Because it's when you can do serious damage to him. And you can see if you get in the right spot, you can attack his gem twice and his hand once with just one swing of the mace. Which of course allows you to build up further much quickly. Yeah, so this, as you can see, the purple lace is going to rotate. And you probably know, but basically purple attacks, you can't dash through them. But that laser, eventually that will get longer and longer, it will change direction, it will do one and then do one straight after. You can normally get one attack off as you jump past the laser. And yeah, so again, 
I've exposed his weak point and his hands have turned over. So if you can save all your MP for this, you can keep freezing time doing more damage. As you can see there, I'm hitting his heart and I'm hitting his hand. So it's building up my MP quicker. And um, I believe jumping and attacking builds up MP quicker as well, as opposed to standing on the ground. Yeah, airborne attacking builds up your MP quicker than grounded attacks. Yeah, the purple attack will also kill the photon lanterns as well, which can be quite helpful. It won't kill the um, sand, the sand crawlers on the floor, but it does normally kill the lanterns. I might know. Well, it might do actually. I mean, it just killed them, didn't it? Or did I do that? I didn't quite see. I thought I remembered it didn't work on the um, the sand men on the bottom. But maybe it does. Anyway, they can be quite annoying because they explode. Yeah, when you kill them salmon on the bottom, they'll explode. So make sure you watch out for that. And as always, avoid that purple blast because it will deplete all your magic. So freeze some time again. Of course, as soon as I've knocked it down, and hopefully I can finish them off now. And yes, there we go. So yeah, that hitting his head twice in his hand once really helps to damage him quicker. And you get a trophy for beating her. I'll show you the trophy. I've already got it, of course. I've pretty much got every trophy except for the Consummate Collector. I'm going to wait until they fix New Game Plus to do that. Because New Game Plus at the moment is not really New Game Plus. It's just more like a a, um, a kind of challenge mode. Because New Game Plus is normally because you can carry things across. You don't carry nothing across except for your cherubs, as I mentioned earlier. But yeah, you'll get that trophy when you beat her. Let me actually see if that update's released. Yeah, so I'm chatting along. So let's make way to the right guys, use the ceramic key to open the door, and then interact with the um, person on the bed for a long cutscene. Let's see if this has they released an update yet. We have we will No, not quite yet. They did say Monday that we were gonna get a an update this week. Um and when what time do they normally post? I don't even know, but sometimes if you know what time they post, then you kind of know maybe what time you can expect the update to go live. Um, I can't check on my phone. Oh no, there we go. Oh, 1.30. Uh, maybe it's not going live today. Maybe it's going to be tomorrow, or it's going to be a little bit later. Yikes, I just sent my um, Google Doc. I just closed it, closed the window. Yeah, in terms of platinum, by the way, yeah, you get a mere copper hilt. You only have it very briefly, you'll see why in a second. Yeah, the platinum, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm going to do the whole platinum guide again. I have updated the text guide at least, so the text guide does still work. And the platinum guide is not changed too much. I mean, yes, a new ability, and they've put some platforms related to that new ability, scattered it around the base game map. So you actually need that ability now to get some of the items which you didn't need to on the, orig on the um, original patch. But it's mega easy to get to as you saw saw me doing. Yeah, so um, once you get control back after all that, so you thought you had the new sword for seconds, only for it to get taken away again. Yes, yeah, so I talked to this woman, Annunciada. Is that her name? Right, where's the boss? Ah, yes, here we go. Yes, yeah, so the boss, when you beat him, you'll get 5,000 Tears of Atonement as well. And as soon as you get control back, you want to warp to the city. Now, we're going to kill another boss. Yeah, so now you want to warp to the only save point in Santa Vigilia. Yes, yeah, warp to the save point, guys. And stand up. Right, so I'm going to get my time build ready. So I'm going to put time on. 
you, you, this time build, you used to be able to um, basically spam it, guys, and the bosses were just completely frozen, but it patched that up pretty quick. Bit of a shame. That's pretty cool, actually, just freezing all the bosses in place. Um, but yeah, this guy. Now, it's up to you how you want to fight him. Sometimes he's a bit easier if you attack him with one of your quicker weapons. Um, but I just seem to use my mace on him. The thing I like about the mace, guys, is it builds up magic really quickly. Whereas the daggers and the swords take a long time to build up mag magic. So this one, you can actually build up magic quicker, stop time. And of course, stopping time is basically free damage. There's actually a figure as well, which lets you freeze time when you heal. Um, but I, I, I would have equipped it, but I just found some other figures more important, I guess. Yeah, so with this guy, it's, it's quite hard to explain his tags. I mean, I can explain him, but you've really just got to learn him yourself in a way, because he's quite fast. And um, I think it's just really practice learning how to telegraph his attacks. But as you see me doing, I'm just keep attacking him with a mace, stopping time when I can do so. It's long range attacks, just make sure you always jump and try to dodge. Because if you do, though, it'll catch you. And if you're not high enough, you see that one there? That big kind of slash he does to begin with, that can hit you if you're not high enough in the air. And when he does his kind of close range attack, he can do that twice. And he can actually, he can switch directions really quick. So if he's about to attack and you jump behind him, he might quickly switch and do that attack in your new direction. Um, but if you jump behind him at the last moment, you will be able to get behind him. So it's all kind of like a matter of timing. I guess I could use that, I could say that for any boss. But yeah, this guy, I do really feel you've got to practice. Yes, you finally got the new weapon, guys. The Mia Culpa. Finally. There's no trophy yet. Well, you will get a trophy um, very shortly. And that's related to the prison guy. And you're also going to get one in a second for getting his sword back. Yeah, so you're going to pull the sword out of the bosom. Yep, only a chosen one can do so. The penitent one. There you go, you got it guys. There's a figure later on which you can get, which makes it so this this sword can attack bells. It can attack... Um, it can attack the mirrors. And it also can go through the kind of like wooden floors and walls. So it means you don't have to keep switching weapon. Um, I don't equip that figure, but yeah, you will get a figure later on, which ba basically gives this sword the powers of the other swords. The tra traversal powers, I guess. And yeah, you'll get this trophy once you get that sword. Yep, yeah, at the mercy of the Griefus Miracle. Right, so you're going to take left exit after that. Yeah, left exit. So now you're going to be using your new ability. When you do this through walls, if you wait a second before you press R1, you teleport further so that across. Because your slash actually goes through the wall quite a bit before it actually dispels. Yeah, your spirit. So if you wait a moment before you actually call, before you press R1 to spawn at the spirit's location, yeah, it'll be further along. So some, sometimes you can use it to get a bit higher than what you can normally and skip parts of some of the platforming. But yeah, break the wooden floors and then save your game. Head over here, guys. You'll find a prisoner. Now, when you find him here, as you approach him, you'll trigger a trophy. But if you killed him, he will not he will not spawn here, so you will not be able to get his trophy. But of course, we reloaded and we let him live. So yeah, this trophy, it spawns when you approach him, providing he is there. And for him to be there, like I say, you have to choose not to kill him on the guillotine. The thing that guillotine, it, it kind of wants you to pull a switch because you, you don't even think about smashing the guillotine, not straight away anyway. 
you know, but leave this there right in front of you so it looks like you have to pull it. But yeah, that's trophy you'll get, guys. Cruel compassion, find a prisoner after releasing him. And then keep talking to him and he'll give you a new figure, the prisoner. Once got that, go back to save point and now you're gonna warp to the middle save point in the severed tower. Once you spawn in, take a left exit twice and you'll find another bird cage. I'm gonna head inside the bird cage and get transported to the left. The Santa Vigilia map is basically just divided into is it four or five little subregions, and dividing each is a bird cage. Right in here. Yeah, we'll be back in this room later because there's one of them gravestones in this room. Yeah, final two actually in this area. Now you're going to see here how annoying it is when there's too many of these, and see that enemy there with a the big red blast. Do not get too close to them because it will do four blasts all together consecutively and if you get hit by that it can basically like instant kill you if you kind of get caught in the epicenter yeah so be very careful if you kill that it does kill all the ones it spawned um, so you can kill them if you want to and then the blue ones will stop spawning or do what I did freeze time and while they're all frozen make way along the platforms and this final one yeah just hit the green switch to um, face out the, the wall guys and then dash past so that's another lump of gold, so that should be one. Remember, we've already handed 10 in. So technically, this is the 11th lump of gold, but we're going for another 10. So always check your gold light, guys, like before. Check the count is right. So at the moment, it should be one. So we've got another gauntlet here. Yeah, these things die pretty quick. These aren't too bad. Yeah, freezing time can be useful sometimes because you can you can pretty much then just instant kill an enemy before it gets a chance to um, recover from a time stop. And got them. So once got them, take a left exit and get a save point. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to take a bottom exit. Now, a switch is just over here, and I kind of missed it. I got the mirror, but I missed the switch. But yeah, you need to hit that switch and then use the mirror to get back across. There you go. I missed the mirror, but at least I got a switch, so um, I can progress now. Yeah, or just hit the switch, guys, and fall to your death. Right, make way all the way across the right. Yep, if that platform's present above the mirror, you can just use the mirror and then jump over to that. Come into the stream. This is a room from earlier. Pull this lever to unlock the shortcut above and then grab this lump of gold. This should be lump of gold number 2 or 12. Yes, yeah, so you should have now lump of gold 2. Now you want to kill all the enemies in this room because there's a gravestone at the bottom. And you've got to kill all the enemies before you can interact with the gravestone. Or before, I guess, the spirit will wake up after you stand still for too long. Yeah, some blue enemies will keep spawning until you take out that spawner, the purple dude. But once he's toast, so will them enemies. There you go, they'll just explode. So you'll be very careful of this. Luckily, there's not too many of them in the game. I think there's about four, maybe. Four or five. But yeah, once you've got all the enemies, drop down here. You should see a grave with the blue flame above it. So now, just like we did before, the other gravestones, you're going to stand still for a good like 30 seconds or so yeah do not move the muscle guys sit still in your chair and then this should trigger right yeah give it a moment we will get it eventually oh here she goes so she's going to bow down bow down to the penitent one yes yeah, so you get another one of them items you get four of them same items then once you've got all four and it completes the item or reveals what's inside I guess then you get the um, upgraded version. And then you take that back to the mausoleum and you get a gold one, like I said, one golden flask. So dash along the um, mere corporal walls at the bottom and then grab that mark of percep uh, perception. You need them to upgrade the mere corporal. So make sure you get that, guys, and then come back through here. Now, once in here, 
Yeah, you want to make your way all the way to the left. Then you want to hit a switch. Yeah, like so. So you can dash it across and get that gold altar. In here should be another mark of the Perceptor. So once got that, it's going to make your way back left, guys. And then going to take the top exit. Yeah, save your game if you need to, if you need to recover. And you want to dash through that mere Corpa thorn above you. And if you time it right, you can actually just warp near ledge above. Save you a bit of time. And in this room, dodge past all the enemies or kill them all if you want to. I think it's a bird cage to the right over here. So yeah, let's make your way up and around. And smash that shortcut ladder. And then carry on right. And yeah, there it is, guys. The bird cage to another one of the... Um, well, this actually takes us back to... One of the um, sub-areas we've already been in. There's probably a lump of gold you remember passing earlier. We couldn't access it. You might have spent a good 30 minutes trying to find out how to get there. Yeah, this is how. So unlock the gates. And then grab that lump of gold. Yeah, that should be lump of gold number three. Yep, or 13, I guess. So once you've got that gold, take the top exit, guys, and then save your game. Now take the exit to the right. Go past the shortcut gate. Carry on right. And we're going to where we got that mud key from earlier. But now we want to be dashing along the bottom, because there's a hidden item. Yeah, so down here. Dash across the left. Try not to fall down. Some of these jumps are quite large between some of the thorns. Yeah, and it's a shame that you can't do that more than once. Or if you mess it up, you don't let you do it again. Without you resetting. Yeah, if you mess it the first time, then you're just going to fall down. So it seems like you have to land in order to reset it or go through one. Yeah, grab that mark of a perceptor. Once you've got it, guys, go back up through the roof. And then through the next room on the left. And then walk back to the city. The reason I walked to the city from there... Is because it will not let you do it in that room where the mud key was. So once back at the city, you're going to walk back to the far northwest safe point, ready to push on, and you can stand up. Yeah, so up the ladder. You're going to make your way through these. You need to keep going up because you need to break that wood floor at the bottom there. If there's one of them enemies in there, just wait a moment for him to come to, over to you before you dash through. Otherwise, he's going to explode and knock you down. So once you've reached that door on the right, go ahead on through, guys. Get you, find yourself outside. And then go right and then take the bottom exit. Unlock this shortcut ladder, which actually takes you back to the save point. So yeah, unlock that. face through there, you see some mirrors, yeah watch out for that dude, you thought lanterns were bad, the floating lan lantern enemies, then things are probably worse, yeah so you have to keep switching weapon here which can get a little bit awkward, because sometimes you just can't change quick enough in order to use new ability, but you have to keep practicing guys, right hit the switch to um, activate that, then you have, with these you have to kind of keep going through, jump, go through, Jump, go through, jump. And as you see, if you try to land on the platforms, it makes it a bit more tricky. It's best just keep going through the thorns. Yep, yeah, and then once you get high enough, eventually do this. Yep, yeah, and through there, guys. So once you're at the top, make way to the right. You want to break that wooden floor. And the second one below. Carry on downwards, smash the glass guys to unlock the shortcut gate and use this next birdie yeah once the birdies gave you a little right carry on right pass these punks slide beneath the wall smash that wooden floor and then take the bottom right exit yep here I want to get a safe Carry on all the way to the left and back into the previous room. Now you're going to make your way through the top exit next. Yep, 
Yeah, but I was hoping I could get enough height. I think I pressed R1 a little bit too early. Right, so in this stream you need to go to the green platforms to begin with. Just ignore that thorn to the right for now. Yeah, unless you can't help it. Yeah, so either kill them guys or just bait them away. You see, it's quite awkward leaving them alive. Probably should have just killed him in the end. The problem is them blue, them kind of like, I don't know what they are, the things covered in that blue blanket. And they'll just keep spawning until you actually kill a spawner, which is at the top. Yeah, you have to dash through that thorns in order to get a green switch on the top right. Yeah, smash that ladder. Dash across here. And then take right exit. A lot of gauntlets. I think this is room there's three gauntlets all together. Yeah, so just dash past them. You don't need to kill them enemies. Oh, no, it's not this room yet. This room has only one gauntlet. Yeah, it's a room coming up with three gauntlets in it. Yes, yeah, so once you reach the bottom right exit, you'll find it closed and the gauntlet will begin. Yes, yeah, about 10 enemies, 10 enemies or so during this gauntlet, I think. I got a cannon, the cannon shooter. He might be the last one, I'm hoping. Oh, and I've got that um, eye, of course, over there. Oh, and that's it, got him. Okay, so once you've got them all, take the bottom right exit. Yeah, be back out on the bridge. Just continue right. Yeah, get past these, just make your way upwards, use the grapple points, the cheer up grapple points. Once you're through, come down, smash shot gate. Now do not Yeah, do not go right yet. Once you've unlocked the shortcut gate, you want to take the bottom exit. Gonna get a final gravestone in a second. And gonna get the upgrade as well for the Mia Culpa. Which allows you to unlock the, well, purchase the level 2 upgrade provided you've got enough marks of the Perceptor. So unlock that wooden wall on the left. And we'll use these um, Mia Corpa walls to make way over to the top left. Dash down through that flooring. Keep going upwards. And there'll be a chest down here. Make sure you get a chest before you destroy the, um, the wooden floor. Because it's gives you a nice summit to land on so you don't just fall all the way down and have to come back up again but yeah from that chest guys you find the figure called the thief yeah so once you've got, you got that figure the thief you smash the wooden wall then you carry on down and you take the bomb exit yeah now in here you're going to kill all these enemies. Yeah, you're going to kill all the enemies near. Because that gravestone is actually on that ledge, that top ledge near the ladder. So just make your way through the room, kill the enemies as you go. Remember, you can freeze time if you need to. Then big guys hanging with a lantern. If you use some mace, you normally knock them back after after about three hits. You knock them back and uh, interrupt their attack if they're currently doing one. Yeah, smash this wooden wall as well. And before we head back up to that first ledge, we're going to continue right a bit more and get rid of these enemies. Yeah, they like to knock you down. And I like to miss.
The cannon guy's quite weak. They only take a few hits with the um, mace. But I got them all. So now you're going to head all the way back. Or a little bit. You're going to dash upwards through that thorn. This one here. And now we see this grey for the blue flame. Just wait near it, guys, to get a final item. Then it will upgrade to another one, which is going to return to a spot later on in the video. And they get the golden flask. Uh, so once we have this guys, we're going to go right, get the upgrade for Mia Corpa like I was saying. I think we've got one more little sub area and that's where the boss is, the final boss of the DLC. And then it's going to be a case of revisiting all the um, extended areas and clearing all them out. Because now we've got our sword now, the Mia Corpa, we can access all these um, extra access points which you need that ability for that's why I didn't really explore too much I wanted to unlock you know our main ability upgrades first like the broken step and the sword now we've got a sword we can basically 100% each zone as we go through it without needing to kind of backtrack at all providing we've done it all in the right order I guess so yep there we go now you can buy the level 2 upgrades providing you've got enough points so you're going to pull that lever guys to unlock the shortcut floor and you're going to make way all the way back up and back through the top exit. Now in terms of buying the upgrades for Mia Corpa guys, if you're going to buy any, do so. I actually don't buy any until I can buy all, every single one at once. Because I don't really need to. But yeah, by all means, your upgrade points for Mia Corpa, spend them on what you want. Like I say, I'm not going to touch it until I've got 14, which is all you can get that allow you to unlock everything. Yeah, so use the bird cage and then head right. Come into this room. You're going to use the mirror and you're going to strike down through the floor and then you want to take this right exit just above. Yeah, top exit we're going to go a bit later. We just want to get a save point just in case you die. Yeah, past this teleport gate. Yeah, we've got a lot of gauntlets coming up. So um, you don't want to die and go back to a previous save point, which is a long way away. This one's better. But if all the shortcuts were opened, it will be a bit quicker to get back anyway, but obviously that's just the closest one. So once back in this room, go for that top floor and into this room, guys. Now this one can be a bit tricky, this little platforming section. When you hit that bell a few times, you I mean, you only have to hit it once. And then you have to dash and then dash up again, jump on that wall, use the mirror, use this mirror, dash through there, Hit the green switch, come across here, and yeah, that's it. It went by pretty well that time. Sometimes I have a lot, of, I have a lot of trouble with that platforming section, but it went by pretty smoothly that time. So in this room, this is one where we've got three gauntlets. Yeah, so pull that lever, and then make your way upwards, guys, through there. And this is your first gauntlet. So like I say, you've got a series of three gauntlets in this room. Yeah, so I am going to use my time stop for this one, for these gauntlets. Because if you're not careful, you're going to run out of bio flasks as well. You have to make them last for three gauntlets worth. Right, got a strong enemy. Now I come up here, get rid of that eyeball laser. Get rid of the spawner. Yeah, if you get too close to the spawners, they will try and slap you. So just make sure you're ready to dodge out if you need to. Right, got them. Now it's got to do the same enemies, but on the opposite side. Yeah, see how quick the maze builds up your magic so fast. Right, that's gauntlet number one. One down, two to go. Yes, yeah, so the second one is going to be down here. This kind of vertical room. Yeah, them cannonball enemies are always in a real awkward place. Yeah, you got a little runts as well running around at the bottom. You're going to have a lantern guy next. And then you're going to have them wimp, them maidens, which kind of spawn the blood, the blood spikes. 
Or I guess mystical. Are they mystical? I forget what colour is the red attacks. Right, I think she's got to take her out now. And then that should be hopefully gauntlet number two there. Yes, that's it. Gauntlet number two. One more to go. Yes, you got a shortcut lever there. Right, so you're going to begin with that one. These ones are quite real quick, so they move really fast. You have to keep, you get a few hits and you have to jump, get a few hits and you have to jump, get a few hits and you have to jump. And the thing is, they always put a good distance between you as well when they do their attack. So you always have to kind of close in on them again. And that maiden, she will eventually spawn near the bottom. So I know it's quite tricky to hit her when she's so high up. Yeah, that, look how messy this gets. So you've got all these. You've got a laser which will come at you. You've got blood spikes on the floor. Yeah, hopefully when they balance this out, it will stop this. Because you know what else I've done? You know the Crimson Reigns. You know the final area in the base game. You've got all them gauntlets as you make your way up. They've There's no gauntlets no more at all. They've turned off all the gauntlets. I don't know why. I didn't think they were that bad. But yeah, they've turned them all off. So yeah, get that final shortcut and then come into this room. Use me a cool path to make your way up. Along here, you want to hit that green switch. Drop down, go through the fake wall. The switch wall. I'm just going to bait all them over to the left. Just so they're not in the way when I go to do this. Now this jump's actually quite, that jump's quite tricky to make. What you'll find is when you use the Mia Culpa or the sword weapons, it gives you a little bit more distance. Yeah, it kind of make it knocks your height down a bit, but it gives you a little bit more distance um, width ways or length ways. So attacking the sword, that green switch does help you to get a little bit more distance, I find. But once you're at the top, unlock that shortcut gate, take out that spawner, you need to go back past them in a minute. You don't want them enemies following you around. Then come back down here. You just want to hit that green switch once. And then go back up the ladder. Yeah. So hit it once. Go back up the ladder. Now we can get the um, gold. Yeah, should be some gold down here. That's it. Lump of gold. And that should be lump of gold number four. Or 14. So now make your way back up to the top. You can either come back up here or you might find it easy to just go back along the bottom and go up that ladder. Now that we've opened the shortcut gate. Yeah, up the ladder. Yeah, it's carrying upwards. I was going to freeze time here. Stop it getting messy. I thought, we were going into another, I thought it was going to be another bird cage then. I was going to say, I'm sure I got rid of them all. See how many health potions I've got left? I'm on my last potion now. Yeah, it's getting really close. Yeah, this is actually the final room, guys, for the boss. There's a save point at the top of this room. Yeah, no enemies either, I don't think. Yes, get our shortcut ladder guys, and there we are. This is the final room before the final boss of the DLC. So there we go, save your game. And then once you've done so guys, just come through this exit on the right. Get a brief cutscene, and yes, you are fighting this guy again. So his attacks are basically a lot stronger now, they'll do more distance, we sometimes do multiple at once, he's faster, does more damage. And he's got an attack as well where he kind of he keeps spinning around and lobbing projectiles at you. And I think the game wants you to block it, so it's quite awkward to jump over, because they'll just come out repeatedly. Um, but if you do see that coming, try to stay on the ground and just kind of dodge through a few of them. Because you'll find if you keep jumping, he, he just keeps doing it again and again he can. Like I said, it's really hard to dodge. You know one that I'll point out in a second. He'll keep spinning around in place. This attack here. If you keep jumping on that one, he'll keep doing it. Sometimes. 
So you want to try to stay on the ground, dash through it or slide through it, and um, then hopefully he'll only do it once. Yeah, that's probably one of the worst attacks I find to dodge. I think the game wants you to block it. Yeah, I think the game wants you to block it. The mace, that attack ain't really that good to dodge with the mace. I think you should be having the dagger equipped or the um, sword so you can block. But yeah, with the, da with the mace, I just kind of stay on the ground and dash through it and he eventually stops. Yeah, he'll do this. He'll summon the lightning and the lasers on you. Well, it's very similar to the first fight. So like I say, his attacks are stronger. Got more distance. And of course, you do that spinning attack as well. This one here. And just keep freezing time. There we go, doing it again. So you can see if I stay on the ground, he kind of only does it to the other side. But if you keep jumping, he, he can just keep switching back and forth. And yeah, he can very easily kill you. And got him, guys. So that's the final boss of the DLC. And we get a trophy for killing him this time. You still need to get the ending C, which is one of the um, new new endings uh, but you actually have to complete the main game to get that but I'll show you how to get the ending C right at the end of the video basically you just have to equip the Mia Culpa sword and there's a certain prayer you have to have it equipped and you have to have you don't have to have them on for the whole fight you just have to have them equipped when you deal with the finishing blow to the boss and we also have to have given him the incense of the envoy if you're going for ending B you won't be able to get that ending C trophy. You have to go for ending A, and then all you do, like I say, you just equip the Mia Corpa and the specific prayer of the penitent one, I think it's called, when you deal with the finishing blow. Yeah, that's the trophy you should have got for defeating him the second time, guys, once and for all. Yeah, prisoner of the holy return. Right, so once you've got control back, jump across into this far room. There'll be a cutscene. Now you're going to see loads of enemies spawn. Well, not loads, three enemies, the penitent ones. They're all going to spawn near each of the main game weapons. Yeah, so here they are. Now each of these enemies, you pretty much have to attack them with the weapon they're spawning beside. If you attack them with any other weapon, they're like really resistant to it. But for example, the one which spawns in the daggers, he's very weak to the daggers. That's kind of how you have to beat them. I think it's, oh, it's been an update now, guys, actually. That's got an update. Um, Mere Corpor Expansion Update 1. Yes, now we're warping over to the Sacred Entombments, the north save point guys we're going to go left five rooms to where the, we got a sword uh, sorry not a sword the mace and we're going to take out that enemy which we just spawned and while we're making our way there i'm just going to read through these patch notes okay so they fixed the issue of the gold lumps would disappear after dying and block and an achievement okay so they fixed the gold lump i wonder if they fixed the um done some of the trophy as well fiction issue where cherubs would not count i think that's some on new game plus um, fixing the issue where the Rue go the, the basically base game sword, the gauge wouldn't fill up quick enough. It, it decreased really quick after this update, but they fixed that now. And um, what else they done? Uh, jump button uh, shown on screen. Fixed cutscenes. Place goes soft lock. Oh, I think I know what room I mean there. Yeah, so. Um, this guy, by the way, yes, yeah, I'm talking about game now. He can do a lot of damage, um, but if you actually use your fire ability on the mace, it does it does almost damage double damage to him. But these guys, they only seem to do like two different attacks. So once you know that they're the massive like library of two attacks, they're quite easy to avoid. I right, scream and widow. Yeah, that's true. I know that. You know that enemy which spawns the eyeball above you? Yeah, I've had it stay on me before, so that's been fixed. Yep, 
Yeah, so once you beat him, guys, normally you'd walk back to the um, to the city now. But I can't because I've got no magic left. I've actually added a gold lump display counter now when handing them in to better understand how many are remaining. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so now you're going to warp to the icebound mausoleum, guys, to the central save point. And I'm actually coming this way because I... I shouldn't have to come here, but there's one tile which was not discovered for me. Even though we actually... You see that lever? Yeah, this map tile here. So make sure you uncover that map tile. Yes, and then I'm going to walk back to the um, city. Then I'm going to walk back to that central save point in the mausoleum. Yeah, I'm going to walk back there. Now, basically what we're doing now, we're going through all the areas now, doing 100%. Now we've got all the abilities. But once you spawn back in, coming to this bottom left room, now you see the middle grave's got a blue flame above it. Interact with it, guys, to get the golden bile flask. Yes, there you go. So now you see one of your flasks is golden. When you use that first flask, it'll heal up your magic full and also your HP. Well, I don't know if it's I think it's full. But yeah, now that one heals up. Just that first one gives you magic and health. Right, so coming in next, make your way down. Take this gold altar by dashing through the thorns. That's it, the mark of the preceptor. Come through this room, which was a gauntlet earlier. Yes, up through this room and take the top right exit. They're going to make our way through here. This one's quite awkward to do. This one, this one might take a bit of practice for you. Yeah, so the new game, the new game plus patch isn't out yet, but they are working on it. They've said in this update. Uh, rest assured, that a design patch is also on the way soon, which will address balancing, true torment, and include more fixes. Yep. Yeah, so once that patch comes out, guys, once new game plus has been changed a bit, then I'll probably do a new game plus playthrough with all the torments active, and we get the um, consummate collector trophy. Um, but right, once you've got that gold altar, guys, you're going to use your um, prayer to walk back to the city and you're going to walk to the east save point in the mausoleum. So yeah, make sure you've got that gold altar before you walk back. Yeah, so now you're going to go left twice because you're going to make your way up this room and for the top left exit. Yes, yeah, so make your way along here. This room is a dead end. There's just an item at the far left, which you want. Uh, well, a gold altar. Yeah, so get that mark of the preceptor. Once you've got that, back to city, and then back to the east save point in the mausoleum again. And um, what we're doing now, we're gonna make our way up out of the mausoleum, and then out of the top right, and into um, Quiet of the Thorns in the bottom part. So if there's any empty, any map tiles not explored, in any other parts of the mausoleum which we are not going to now then you've missed them because we're not going back into mausoleum at all we're basically doing everything in the mausoleum now so once we leave mausoleum guys if you've got any map tiles remaining it's because you missed them yourself and you have to go back and get them and um, so here we want to activate the statue now we're going to get a chest at the top i'm just going to freeze time there so i'm going to get stun locked i'm not careful yes yeah, so you've got to be quick and uh, you're going to use your need your sword for the mirrors so yeah, quickly activate the statue and start making your way up the room. Then are gonna they are gonna be chasing you, so make sure you're quick. Yeah, I mess that one up, but I actually still make it in time, surprisingly. Yeah, so don't go through that chain you're there. Just outside the exit, you want to keep going upwards, and there it is. So yeah, if you make a bit of a mistake, you can still make it, as you saw me do. So you get bandage of the heretic, that's a bead. And then we're going to take this upper left exit. And then you're going to go back outside. So, yep, anything inside which you missed, you need to go back and find it yourself, guys. Any empty tiles, for example. Now, in this room, we're going to go left uh, because 
it's going to be a bit of a sky platforming section. So up here, top of that ladder, you're going to jump and dash to the right and then back on yourself and then onto this platform and then through here and over to this floating platform, guys. Or it's chained up to something. Get a mark perceptor. Now jump through the screen on the left, but do not double jump or dash. Just jump once. You'll fall in from the top and you can double jump and dash to get to that grapple point. Then use the mirror, use the other grapple points. Make sure you switch to your sword. Dash through there. And you get this hidden gold to as well, guys. Another mark of perceptor. Now you want to go right two screens. Yeah, you'll know this room. This room's probably familiar to you. Remember, we've got them two mirrors to get to the top right. Yeah, so go right twice. You've got this right and then another right. Then we've got another bit of sky platforming to get to another item. Yeah, right. So this next item we're going to be grabbing. It is going to be another prayer, I believe. Yeah, Rondina to the Unyielding Pledge. Yeah, so in this room, you've got to make way to the right. And um, keep an eye out for a grapple point above you. There it is. Yes, jump on the grapple point, and then you need to kind of dash across with the sword. And you've got a, you've got a horizontal one there as well. You've just got to dash through, and then jump, and then do, and then dash again. And there you go, Rondina to the Unyielding Pledge. Right, make way back to the right. Now we're going to right, go right two screens and into the Choir of Thorns. And that should be the Muslim all completed. Yeah, and by the way, the other area is completed as well. Santa Vigilia, that's completed. And this area is. All we've got to do with Santa Vigilia now is go back after killing them three enemies near the base game weapon locations and get a prayer. So here, yeah, unlock the shortcut gate and save your game. Now make a way up, dash through the chain, and we've got left, and we're going to take the central left exit, which is this one up here. Now it's a bit awkward getting up here, unless you kill that lamp at enemies. I'm just going to freeze time, which is not going to knock me down. Yep, so go left straight across this room. There's a room like this, actually, where one of the um, tiles doesn't complete properly. There's a bit of a bug. Yeah, so grab that lump of gold and trigger that shortcut gate. And can I stop mentioning to you about lumps of gold because apparently it's been patched. Yeah, so you've got another one. So of course this one is the dagger guy. So yeah, use your daggers on him. Now if you build up your three points for your daggers, you do tons of damage. That means you've got to do it without getting hit. And all they do, he'll do lightning attacks and he'll kind of do like a horizontal lightning attack where he'll dash. Now that dash he does has a long, kind of, it's got a long hitbox so you be careful. You need to jump that. Do not try to dash through it, you need to jump over it. It's got a really long hitbox. And unfortunately, because I've actually just died, you see, I've just resurrected because I've got full guilt now. So I'm not going to be able to walk back because now I'm not going to be able to use magic. So I'm going to have to more make way back on foot. There might be some figures that might counter that slightly. There's some counters which kind of reduce your guilt uh, gained and whatnot. I'm not quite sure that affects it when you resurrect. I, I didn't try it. Um, but, yeah, it may affect it. Probably won't. I mean, that resurrection thing said it does complete fury guilt bar. So I can't see anything else stopping that happening. But yeah, it's got me a little bit curious, I guess. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, once you kill that second one, so we've got one more of them to kill, and that's the sword guy. We're going to be making our way to him next. Yeah, so normally you'd walk back to that, you walk back to the city, and then back to the southern save point in the Quiet of Thorns. The last save point we basically activated, you walk back there. But I'm going to have to make way back on foot. Yeah, it'd eventually bring you back into this room at the bottom right. You'd come back up here. You jump above this chain. And there's a secret wall there, guys. With a figure behind it. The sisters. Yeah, once you've got that, we're going to make way upwards, guys. And take the top left exit. Ignore the top right one. We'll come back there later. So, yeah, take the top left exit.
yet make way to top of the tree. Don't worry about anywhere which you think we've missed. We're going to be exploring that bit a bit later after this. You just want to make your way up here first. Hit that bell. Dash through the chain. Use your grapple points. Make your way all the way to the top. And break this door. That's it. Get another lump of gold, guys. So that should be a lump of gold. Um, number 16. Yeah, it should be 16 lump of gold. Right, now go right a little bit more. And you get to the save point. Which we triggered earlier. Yes, yeah, so this save point here. Now you're gonna. I'm gonna confess, cause yeah. Hopefully my sins will be forgiven. Yeah, you wanna warp back to the southern save point. So once you spawn back in, head back up, and now we're gonna take a top right exit. Yeah, top right exit now. Yeah, through here. Yeah, this room's a massive square room and it's got a lot of, of them thorns which are going to have to traverse across. So there's two statues on the bottom right. Activate the first statue to begin with. And then you kind of go left and then up and then left again and then up and then left again. And you quickly get through that door before it closes. That's the one. So slide through there. Continue left. The big gold altar which will have a mark of a Percepticon inside it. Yeah, so grab the Percepticon mark and then unlock that shortcut gate. Once you unlock the shortcut gate, go back the opposite way because now we want to take that other path which we avoided. Well, we couldn't take them both, uh, but we're going to take the alternate one now. So make way all the way back to where two statues were. Now we want to activate the remaining statue and they'll unlock the top right door. So, yeah. Now you've got to be quick here. Of course. So that's usually what happens with time doors. So as you can see, this bit's quite tricky. And wow, first time, lucky me. Yeah, slide through there. Let's make our way along here. These opened areas are quite easy actually. Yep, another gold altar. So another mark of the Percepticon. Get that one. Through here and unlock that shortcut floor now jump up and just make sure you've uncovered the map tile above you and you see what I just showed on the map that's a map tile which is not discovered but it should have been because we've already been through here yes this spot here you only get this map tile if you go in the lower part so see where I am now and I drop down here and I'm actually to the left so yeah make sure you uncovered all these map tiles on that kind of east part of the map in the Choir of Thorns. And once you've done so, walk back to the city. And then we're going to walk back to the Quiet of Thorns. But to that save point here. Yes, the one near where we've got a broken step ability. Right, so once you spawn back in, now you want to go left. Yes, up here. And then we're going to keep going up. Then we're going to take the exit on the left. Yeah, this one. Open this chest. Yes, you'll get a bead inside. The Raven Amulet. Yes, that should be item number 14 of 31, I think, in terms of DLC. But the problem is, I think that count is going to change. So it's probably not really that useful telling you. But I have got a counter wrote down in my text guide. Because when this DLC first released, it said there's 31 items for Consummate Collector. On this Steam Achievement Tracker, yeah, 31. Um, there's actually only 28 items, but I think the other three came from, for example, one one of the points towards that 31 came from collecting all beads. For example, you collect all beads and you got one point towards the 31. You collect all press, you get one point towards 31. But then you get a point for each figure of DLC, each DLC prayer and each DLC be uh, bead. Each one of them would give you a point. And we'd also need the new game plus items as well like new game plus figures and the bead and prayers from there as well but we'll see they might change that they might do but even if they don't guys when we do the new game plus run we'll get all the remaining items for consummate collector um, when we do that so make way through this room next so I did get chatting away sometimes but you can you can see on 
on the screen where I'm going. So you make your way around this room. And we'll go through the bottom right exit. This is going to take you to a mark of the Perceptor. Yeah, now here. Yeah, you can actually use your ability to get a bit of height. Because what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to use that mirror to reach that bell. But if you hold the charge button with the mace, jump, let go. You'll spin around in the air a little bit. And then double jump. You can just reach it. Yes, yeah, so you've got Mark Perceptor. Unlock that shortcut gate just there. Now you want to continue upwards. There's the item up here we want to get. But this bit of platforming is a little bit tricky. You have to be kind of almost... You have to be... Your jumping on that chain there has to be kind of almost perfect. And you need to make sure you safely double jump. So you want to get as high as you can on that wall. Yep, yeah, and then you want to dash. But like I say, you want to safely double jump when you get through the chain so, so that you can jump onto the grab point. I think that should be a bit easier. I think it's intentionally harder than what it should have been. So maybe that'll get fixed. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, I feel like that's not working as intended. Yeah, so you get that Kante uh, Jondo off the polluted heart. Now you take top left exit. Now you're gonna take the upper path next. We took the bottom left path in this room earlier, but now we're gonna make our way up. You're going to take the upper left exit in here. That's going to be another lump of gold, guys. Yes, yeah, so you're going to have to take out this guy because he's quite big and um, and green, and he's blocking your path. Unless you can slide between his legs and give him a punch just as you slide past. So you got lump of gold here. This should be lump of gold number seventeen. Three more to go. Get a shortcut gate, and you've got the final one of them enemies here. So this is the sword enemy. So you don't have to use a Ruego Al Alba. You can use a Mia Corporate instead. Just got to use one of the sword variations. By the way, if you don't remember how to change back to your original sword, you have to hold L1. And that chains between your two swords. Of course, now would probably be a good time for me to um, unlock all them upgrades so that I do a bit more damage and you can do more combos as well. It's a shame you don't see the health gauge. Yeah, there needs to be a health gauge in these two. Oh, you know what would? Health bar. That's what you need. Because when you have it set to damage numbers in the um, options menu, you don't actually see the total number, do you? You just see how much each attack does. But if you have a if you have a health set to health bar on the options, then you see the full bar, and you can actually see how much health we've got left. Yeah, so if you change the options, guys, to bar, you'll probably see how much health we've got in total, which would really help in this. I can't believe it's taken me this long to think of that. Thing is, I do like the numbers, because you see exactly how much damage you're doing then, when you're trying to work on your builds. Right, that's it. So that's all three of them. So next up, we're going to use the um, warp prayer. We're going to walk back to the city. Now we're going to walk back to that top part of Santa Vagina. And, um, yep, go and get a prayer. So you're going to warp up there to the northeast safe point in Santa Vigilia. And this prayer you're going to get from doing this, you actually need this for ending C. You have to have this equipped and the Mere Corpa when you deal with the finishing blow to the final boss in the main game. Yes, there it is guys, the prayer of the penitent one. So yeah, we equip that and the mere culpa in order to get ending C. But you have to be on the path for ending A. And by the way, you know the incense of the envoys? Since the update, uh, the mere culpa update, you actually get that by doing ending B now. So you no longer have to destroy your figures to get the incense of the envoys, yet you now get it for completing ending B. Which is really, really helpful. Because now you've got all the figures left. I mean, I was quite lucky. I actually made a save. When I did a platinum guide for this. Just before doing ending A. So I still had all my figures remaining. Um, and I just completed the game again on ending B. And I got the end voice. And of course, you need that to get ending C. So in this room. I'm going to make a way up. I think you could actually soft lock yourself in here. You see that room there where the wooden floor is. 
if you if you got in there without the double jump or the swords, you you couldn't get out. Get out. Yeah, but apparently they fixed that. So this room might change very slightly. But yeah, basically you have to activate that switch at the top, guys. Make your way down quickly and get onto this platform to get the mercy figure from the chest. Then pull the lever to unlock the shortcut and then go back down. They probably just took off that slide. Maybe they've made it lower or something. But yeah, then make your way through this room. Get our shortcut gates and unlock this chest to find the blood-stained chain link. Yep. Yeah. Continue downwards now. Take the bottom exit. We can be exploring the optional area now in the grills and ruin, which is very, very short. This is basically the final room that they've added. Not very big at all. So you want to fully explore the bottom left part of the map. Then you want to activate the V bell on the left. Then come to the right. Quickly destroy this floor with your swords. Quickly destroy the door, which the bell has to open. That's it. And grab lump of gold, guys. I think number 18 is it. Yeah, lump of gold number 18. Now make sure you fully explore this room. And then walk back to the city. And then once you get back to the city, you're going to walk to the Mother of Mothers, the um, bottom save point. So Mother of Mothers, the bottom save point. Yep, just walk there. In here, which is going to go right twice. Uh, sorry, right once and then down once. And then we're going to keep going right um, through the secret area. Well, the extended area. So yeah, we are in now in beneath her sacred grounds. So let's carry on downwards. And you want to take the next exit on the right, just here. Yep, head through here, jump above that enemy. That's it, jump straight on the spikes. Make sure they penetrate you. Yep. Hopefully that will make you um, regret all your sins you've taken. Yep, and then that secret wall there. That's actually one of the upgrades for, I forget what weapon now, maybe it's for the mace. Um, but yeah, smash that fake wall. And um, jump up here. Loot this chest for another bead. Yeah, that's the antique locket. That should be providing us 31 items still. That's DLC item number 18 of 31. Yeah, carrying through here. Now you want to take the top path first because it's a dead end and it leads you to something which we need. So yeah, let's continue upwards. Yeah, use the mirror. Use a wall grapple and you got to kind of dash across what you use your sword to do it with. So you destroy the green switch at the same time. Grab that mark of the Percepticon and then dash across these mirrors. Once back in here, yes, that's it. Drop back down. Don't worry, you will be forgiven. And then take the bottom right exit. Now in this long room, you got to jump, use the cherub to get across. So I guess if you came on this in the main game, you can't actually go across there until you've done all the cherubs. Yeah, so hit the V-bell and then carry on upwards. Jump on these slowly so you have somewhere to wait while you wait for the um, echo to go off. Yeah, take top exit and there's another lump of gold, guys. That should be lump of gold number 19. Get a shortcut gate and we're not going to warp anywhere because we've still got a another extended area just nearby so it's come through the exit on the left we'll be back in the mother of mothers that's your grandma yeah so through the room on the left continue onwards and you want to take the top right exit yeah take this exit directly opposite this is a new this is an extended area this part so dash through there Yeah, now you've got to use all your sword abilities here. You've got to use this, all your weapon abilities. So you've got to use the swords, then the mace, and then the daggers. In that order. So sword, uh, mace, daggers. And then quickly grapple up here before the echo goes off. That's it. That should be final lump of gold. You should have 10 now in your inventory, guys. And push the lever to open the floor above. Yes, you see 10. To the top right exit. 
that's it and that should be mother of mother should be all done now and beneath her sacred feet that should all be done so once back in the streets of wakes make way to the bottom right where you can smash the wall guys to find the statue interact a bit to lower the mirror then use the mirror to get to them upper ledges so you can access the item on the far right yeah so quickly get up here guys use the mirror and there it is yeah so that will be the dance the dance figure next up drop down come back into the tower and um, get to save points now this save point we are going to warp to the south save point in the crimson rains is it rains or ruins I think it's rain yeah rains so you're going to talk to um, what's his name is it Medar Medardo or something but yeah talk to the MC at the bottom and um, you can actually buy the rosary bead pearl of a punish from him for 20,000 basically you know um why have I put that cost? I put my guide that cost 3,000, it's 20,000. Yeah, and then you want to walk back to city and then to the third save point from the left in the labyrinth of tides. Yeah, so sorry, Medardo. Yeah, depending on what, if you kill the prisoner or you let him survive, he'll sell the other item. So if you kill him, you normally get the bead up on death and then you buy the figure from him. But if you, let him, if you let him survive, you get a figure from him when you talk to him in the Santa Vigilia. And then, of, of course, then you buy the beads from the NPC, Medardo. Uh, but yeah, in this room, guys, come through here for the top right exit. Keep making way through these rooms. Yeah, I think Labyrinth of Ties is the last area we need to complete now, guys. We should get 100% in this area. Yeah, make way through this room dash through the bottom there with ground pound to smash that floor up here smash the shortcut gate and by the way you know the trophy for finding 100% off the new areas if you don't have mere corpor dlc i think you can actually pop that with just the extended areas but if you've got the mere corpor dlc installed then you have to explore all areas so it kind of depends because you'll find as well yeah another mark of the preceptor there because when you download the actual Mere Corporate DLC, it kind of extends your map percentage. But if you just download the updates, that'll kind of extend it a little bit. But downloading DLC will extend it even more. It kind of changes the percentage twice, depending. But the thing is, you have to have the Mere Corporate DLC anyway to get all the DLC trophies. So, in a sense, you need to buy Mere Corporate DLC. So just getting that map trophy by itself doesn't really do anything, I guess because you'll still be missing others which you will not be able to obtain um, but anyway guys you got a secret wall here you got a chest behind there with a figure inside called the aid you're going to have to kill this guardian enemy door guardian that's it continue downwards you want to unlock that shortcut yeah make way up here and get that shortcut gate Right, make sure you've unexplored all map tiles in this room because that's all we want to do. We're not actually going to the bottom exit. We're going to go back to the exit, the entrance we came through. We just want to unexplore, uh, sorry, explore, unexplore. We're going to explore all map tiles. That's it. They're going to come back through here. Now you're going to take this path. You're going to unlock that shortcut floor. They're going to take the top right exit. Yeah, another tricky platforming bit. This part you can just make it if you use your sword. I think you can use your dagger and still make it. Um, but you need a sword anyway. And make sure that last bit you dash. You R1 won't work there because there's no thorns. I know because I've I got stuck there one time. I kept pressing R1 and then I realised there's no thorn. That's why I keep falling down. You actually need to dash after hitting the green switch. But yeah, that should be fi your final mark of the perceptor so now you should be able to unlock the final upgrades if not you've missed one guys if you have missed one look at my text guys find out where they all are and just go through all their locations yep so you should get this trophy now that's fully unlocking the tree potential yeah this is where i actually popped it before these are the two which i got lost when i didn't really know what i was doing 
yeah it took me a while to find these two um, but yeah that's that trophy guys for fully upgrading the Mia Corpa basically legacy of the twisted one right now we're going to get 100% map completion as well so through there dash through there and then go top left that's the final tile just to the left now, I think the map's a bit glitchy here because it kind of says a dividing room but it's not it's all one screen and that's it that should have been a la last tile guys so you can see on my map it says 100% and this is a quick overview of what it looks like. Yeah, I'll just show you where I popped the trophy. So I, when I popped this trophy, I, I actually popped it without the Mia Culpa DLC. I just popped it with the update, I think. Pretty sure. Or maybe that's on Steam Deck. Yeah, because yeah, because here there's no birdcage. So that's where I popped the trophy when I first came into this tile. That popped the trophy because I didn't have the DLC properly installed. I just had the update, the extended DLC. It popped the trophy there, but it's no bird. The bird cages don't spawn unless you buy the Mia Corpa. And um, but yeah, once you've got that trophy, guys, walk back to save point. Now we're going to warp to the furthest east save point in a labyrinth of tides. We're finally going to hand in the final gold lump. And once you hand this in, we should have all the items from the DLC. And I'll just go over what you should have. So yeah, talk to tree guys. That's all 20 lumps of gold. And you'll get the Liberator. So what Liberator does, so I did explain this earlier. It makes it so the Mere Corpa has the movement upgrades for all of your weapons. So it will, it will hit the bells. It can obviously dash through the wood. And it can also hit the mirrors, which is really good. Yeah, so this is what you should have. So I'm only going to show you DLC stuff. So you should have Trade Skates and these five here. So six beads in the DLC. There's more. There's more in New Game Plus. I'm showing you what you can get in New Game just by looking for them in the map. So then bottom four verses and the bottom four prayers. Uh, sorry, bottom four verses and bottom four chants. That's what you should have. So eight prayers all together, four and four. And I can't really recall exactly what prayers we just got for the DLC. So I'm just going to show you all of them. So these are all the prayers. But of course, if you go into New Game Plus, there'll be a few more slots, I think. Yeah, so that's all the press, guys, which you should have. Right, and once you're ready, let's go and kill the final boss. So travel back to the city, guys, and then back to the north save point in the Crimson Rains. So like I said, if you do not have incense of the envoys, you first need to get ending B. Ending B is just a default one. Just agree to ascent. Yeah, I'm just going to show you on my, on my actual save file. So on my save file, I am 100%. Yeah, it took me two hours. So yep, yeah, 100% guys on my save file. Right, let's go and do ending C. So, as you can see, I do not have the envoy. So, at first, I need to do ending B in order to acquire it. I don't think that's a bug. I mean, if it is a bug, you normally have to burn the four figures to get the envoy from down the bottom. From a room down the bottom, near the bottom of this area. So, if you cannot get the envoy from this way, you're just going to have to, I guess, look at my platinum guide at the end of that for how we get the envoys. Or check for another guide online. But yeah, hopefully they should leave this in. I think they've left this in just so you can keep all the figures because it wasn't very great before you, you spend all that time getting all the figures and the f the, before the good ones get destroyed but yeah come over here just ascend that's it I'm, I've speeded this up guys to get through it quicker so yeah quickly beating him you'll see me beat him properly in a second when we go for ending C Yep, so um, I just loaded it back in, and now if you look, I should have incense of the envoys. Yes, there we go. So what we've got to do is get ending B to get that now, guys. And hopefully that's not a bug and that's something they leave in. Right, so um, once you've got the envoys, like I say, make sure you've got me a corporate, of course, and you've got the prayer of the penitent one. So equip the prayer of the penitent one. Yeah, equip that. That's it. Make sure that's equipped ready. 
And then all you need to do is make sure you get the finishing blow with Mia Culpa on the boss. And make sure you've got that, that prayer equipped as well. Prayer of the Penitent One. And then come back over here, choose to send, and then choose to use to give the incense of the invoice. Yeah, you have to give the incense of the invoice. That's it. You have to be on the way to ending A to do this. Yeah, it's not too bad. On my platinum guide, I, I basically stun locked him by freezing him in place. Um, when you could use the free, you could basically freeze an enemy in place because you build up magic so quick, you just keep spamming the time stop prayer, and it's really useful. They obviously they nerfed it a little bit, so you can't quite cheese the bosses like that. But it still kind of works. It's just not it's not as effective, but you can still kind of do the same thing. Just keep attacking the mace, freezing, attacking the mace, freezing. And remember, when you use your first flask, you're going to get all your MP filled up. So try to save it until, I mean, if you're low on health, you're going to have to use it. But try to save it if you can until you're low on magic and low on health. Yeah, them big yellow explosions that spawn jump out where then they can do a lot of damage. And the hitbox actually just lasts for a few seconds so when it explodes if you jump and then fall on the explosion just afterwards it will still damage you you eventually will spawn these platforms you have to jump on them obviously otherwise you'll take damage from that blue stuff on the floor but I guess that's lightning damage is it? I don't know sometimes it's hard to tell and once his health gets critical he'll make armor around his heart and when the armor appears around his heart sometimes if you're quick enough you can actually kill him before the armor appears but there it is yeah that armor appears you have to destroy the flowers in order to be able to damage him again but if you do not destroy all four flowers quick enough then it will slowly start spawning them back one by one so you want to quickly destroy all four as soon as possible that's it like so and yeah i don't know why when they hit him Yeah, eventually once you half break the armor he will drop the platforms and you'll go back to fighting him on the floor again and yep make sure you change the mere culpa remember make sure you change the mere culpa when he's almost dead very important what i tried to do is try to build up my full magic gauge when he's almost dead and then switch mere culpa so that I can just freeze him in place and just bam with the Mia Culpa a few hits and he'll be dead. And then what will happen with the Mia Culpa equipped and the prayer of the Penitent one on that finishing blow, on this part here, you'll get a button prompt circle. Which is basically, I think, you do the same, but I think you use your prayer and the Penitent one, the spirit. Yeah, so you get that prompt, guys, circle. Obviously, you press it. Yeah, and your spirit, which he summoned, will do the finishing blow for you. Um, but yeah, I'll skip that out just to not spoil the ending for you. So yeah, but this is the trophy you'll get there, guys. Post-mortem, it will spawn you in the credits. Credits will be slightly different. And there you go, that's ending C. So all that's left, guys, is Consummate Collector. Uh, but we'll do that when we get a New Game Plus update on. So yeah, that's how to get 100%, guys, on Blasphemous 2, Mere Corpor DLC, in two hours. So thank you for watching guys and I will see you on the next one.